are some of the young faces of South Africa, the future of this country. But every day when that bell rings, they all go back to different realities, different circumstances and different backgrounds. Some of their homes behind high brick walls, others behind corrugated sheets. Electricity, yeah, still a dream. The face of poverty has taken on more shapes. It is here in Munsiville informal settlement west of Johannesburg where we meet 36-year-old Christine de Doid, an unemployed mother of one who lives with her husband who also doesn't work. Maybe when my husband gets a job again, it will be better. My little girl is staying here and it's not sometimes it's not safe christine's seven-year-old daughter attends a nearby school she benefits from a government program which exempts poor families from school fees but it's from these communities that some have managed to rise I was born and brought up in the one-room shack. Um, sometimes I will, I will feel bad um, that I was born in such a family, um, you know. Um, so I grew up, you know, really um, under difficult conditions, but brought up to be the man that I am today. And today, 31-year-old Spile Butelezi is a lawyer. His poverty-stricken roots in Clement KwaZulu Natal, the driving force behind his success. When the financial assistance from Anesfus was not enough, he drove a taxi to fund his studies. Would you attribute your success to affirmative action policies like BEE, for instance? From varsity, I was uh, a beneficiary of Anesfus. From there, I worked for one of the top firms in this country. Obviously, that top firm, it was a white law firm, as they are called, and that was due to affirmative action, your PE, because remember, they are also required to comply, um, you know, with those, with those legislations. So, um, and, and, and I must say, um, I, 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 I was made by the current government. Say among the black workforce, only 18% are skilled and in managerial positions. This is a 3% increase since 1994, while 61% in the white workforce are in top positions, a 19% increase since the dawn of democracy. Of the surveyed businesses, only 31.3% are owned by women. Among them is Rihanna Musaji, who owns a consulting firm. But this after a challenging period. Leading the team that introduced the BRT system in Johannesburg, death threats came her way, forcing her to get bodyguards when the taxi industry violently opposed the system. Obviously, the Riavaya project and the kind of energy it took meant that something had to be on the back burner. And for that period, that something was my family and my home life. I think across the board, uh, women are feeling like they have so much more to give, so much more to contribute. The young, maturing democracy, even more enticing to foreign nationals. Downtown Johannesburg, as cosmopolitan as any world capital from the hopefuls to the academics. Professor Shadra Guto was born in Kenya and now is naturalized. Since I came here in 1994, of course I, I was a professional, a professor uh, at VIT University, now I'm at uh, University of South Africa and so on. Uh, we came at a higher level of intellectual capital rather than the ordinary people. But I would say that South Africa has moved quite a lot forward, positively, but also we are beginning to see negative sentiments coming out and we need to deal with those.
these are just some of the faces of the South African narrative 21 years into democracy. Where do you fit in? Hey, look at more news after the breaks.